folks, it's Son of Beast. Welcome back to another reaction video. And this time, I'm heading back to Let Me Explain Studios for Rebecca Parham's channel. The last time I reacted was, it was the childhood fears that happened when most people, or kids, have some scary feelings. But now you feel like you're a big sucker to this point. Well, I'll tell you what. Since I haven't told you anything before, since 2010, this was my biggest fear on the, when I first walk in, I felt like it was going to be, I think it's like, going to be scary for some reason, and I felt like I was going to die, and I kind of like screeching out and everything, but it seemed like that now, I am no longer a child to get fears on, I feel like that I am completely different. Well, I guess now you would have to find out if there is another chance to go with the effort. Because that's probably what I'm taking in for to get right into the action. So there is another chance way that I'm about to do. This next um, story that she's talking going to talk about is Theater Teacher's Weird Body Language Fury. Some of you people were asking, like, is this a rude behavior? Like, doing body, like, you're being slugged? Doing, like, you feel like, yeah, whatever. Or maybe you would feel like, Hey, how are you doing? Or something like that. Sometimes body languages are feel like most people are controlling their behaviors and feel like, Ugh, what is this guy doing already? There is a bunch of people who are doing some too many body languages with their slang and doing it too much at their own time. I mean, this is definitely going to be very hard for them to try to like make a fury out of it. But now, this is what's going to happen now. So... Without further ado, I'm going to let Rebecca take it over. And now here's your presentation with Theodore Fury's Teacher's Body Language Fury. Okay, let's get to it. Take it away, Rebecca Perham. The theater, the theater, what's happened to the theater? It hasn't gone anywhere and it probably never will. I guess you will never well do that. The apocalypse could happen, and all that would be left is a bunch of cockroaches and a ten-person acting troupe performing cats to said cockroaches. You remember me talking about this lady? This mentally unstable theater teacher that clawed her way up from hell? Well, guess what? I ain't done exploiting the memory of her yet! This is what you get for traumatizing me in my vulnerable formative years. You will never try to get away from this if you're acting a little bit of it too much to get over it. Snake face. Whether I like to admit it or not, I did learn some things about theater from Medusa. Some good, some bad, and some random things that I swear she made up because I have not found any evidence of them existing anywhere else. I put forth the following to you, dear explainers. The four character spheres. Vacant head sphere, intellectual head sphere, heart sphere, and will sphere. Oh, something like that. Like it's a will Chris slap. With their powers combined, they make up a school of magic and constantly flex on each other. I didn't know that. Am I reading the right notes here? For real though, mm. according to my theater teacher, all people and characters fall under one of these four categories based entirely on body language. She sold this as a legit way of character acting. Yeah, so I'm cashing in on this lady's weird theories and putting the question out to you. Which character- Well, which character do you think has the best body language? Well. Let's find out what happens. And here's what the quiz is. Dear Sphere, are you? Click the link to take our quiz. Don't, there's no link. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, I think she wants to goof off, so don't worry, you're okay then. All right, let's begin. Let's do it. <clears throat> uh, excuse me, uh, <laughs> where did I put that reel? Oh, uh oh. Uh, here we are. The differences between the spheres are based entirely on four types of body. Oh, it's definitely like a 1950s reel make. Oh, that's interesting to put it in black and white. Awesome. Body language. The walk, eye contact, sitting, and hand gestures. Okay. All right. So I do understand what it is, especially to me. See if any of these feel familiar. We'll start with the twins. Vacant head sphere and intellectual head sphere. Now, I remember my teacher was adamant we understood that these spheres have nothing to do with intelligence. A character could be a vacant head sphere and still be a genius. And I'm not just saying that because some of these traits apply to me. 
Now then, when a vacant head sphere walks, they tend to lead with their head. They also tend to walk with a purpose, even if they don't have anywhere to be. Oh, yeah, that, that seems like it's a little gone out of the way for some reason. I mean, I don't know what is the point with this. That seemed to be like it's a little out of the way to get right to it. I mean, I don't know what's going on, so I can't help it. Walking, gotta walk, gotta get there. Where is there? I don't remember. Wait, I'm just taking a stroll through the park. Gotta walk. They also do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know why those people would do that, but here's what the next thing is. They have a bounce in their step, so if they're wearing a ponytail, that thing swings like a 1930s big band. My references are not dated. They'll get it. They've all played Cuphead. Yeah, of course you would like to do that. I mean, Cuphead is a kapoo moment, and I mean, I'm not letting that one get away with this. It needs to be done here right. Next up is eye contact, specifically while talking to someone. They can head spheres are a little funny this way. They have the ability to hold eye contact, but they just don't wanna. They're still listening. Their brain is just multitasking. I mean, like killing two birds with one stone, for example. Right, so the surprise party for Emily is on Saturday. Don't tell Emily. There's a cat over there. I bet Emily would like a cat. I should steal that cat. When bacon head spheres sit, they tend to sit on the very edge of the seat. And when it comes to hand gestures, bacon head spheres use their hands when talking a lot. It's like their mouth is directly connected to their hands. If you kidnap a bacon head sphere and want to shut them up, just tie their hands to the floor. This is also one of those traits that is certified Rebecca. Oh, sometimes it gets certified. I mean, I, I understand it now, but basically more importantly, I just really have to say some hand gestures, they need to be kept calm. They can't let that one get away with it too much. So they have to like make it fair, do the right thing. And you don't want to make it anybody feel that's bad out of you. So with your hand gestures, I mean, don't try to do it in front of their face. I mean, it, it gets too much out of the way. Not to anybody who has done it, so can't let them go why. So I guess you know how to kidnap me now? No. no. Now, let's move on to the vacant head sphere's twin sibling, the intellectual head sphere. But they're the type of twins that have like some similar features, but are in actuality entirely different people. Again, this has nothing to do with intelligence. An intellectual head sphere could technically be a dum-dum. But honestly, I've never come across anyone who acted this way that wasn't a big old brainy nerd about something. Much like their twin, intellectual head spheres will sit on the very edge of their seat and also lead with their head when they walk. Minus the ponytail swinging bounce, of course. But in direct contrast to their boisterous sibling, when you start to speak to an intellectual head sphere, they must immediately stop what they are doing and very intently stare directly at you while you talk. Yes, they have to do that. Not look at your paper while you just write things stuff. I mean, asking a question has to do with the right thing to get that match up in a way. So it has to be the right way to do so. So that's what the teachers are basically are asking what that is to an almost intimidating degree hey so you got a moment i just wanted to ask about that new filing system that keith you know what i'm just gonna go ask keith oh for real you're gonna say that too huh intellectual head spheres like doing very small things with their hands while talking or thinking like fiddling with a pen or a coin twiddling their thumbs and their gestures are very small and understated it just feels like this character sphere is the embodiment of the term mild-mannered, the librarian of the bunch. Stick them in an apartment with a vacant head sphere and you've got a mildly interesting sitcom on your hands. Uh, I, I basically wouldn't just go with that, so I'm sorry, but that is not going to let anybody take over from you. You know how it, I say about you. We'll be right back to Vacantly Intellectual after these messages. Moving on, you have the Heart Sphere. A favorite of mine, probably because I share the most traits with this one. Oh, is that so? Oh, and you're describing it to one from The Rescuers, for sure. Had to be it. This sphere is basically Miss Bianca from The Rescuers movies. First of all- Yeah, that's what I basically described as, you know. That's what it is, love and heart jester. Heart spheres have very good posture when they walk because they lead with their chest. Guess you could say they follow their hearts. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Now, when a heart sphere. Okay, I don't know what you're thinking right now, so, uh, not letting this happen. Spheres talking to you, they maintain eye contact very well. But the key is their eyes react very empathetically with whatever it is you're saying, whether it's happy, sad, angry, what have you. You never second guess if a heart sphere is actually listening to you. Wow, the 
heart sphere is big on empathy. It's like a villain being named Reginald McEvil Man. When it comes to a heart sphere's hand gestures, everything is centered around the heart to a literal degree. They, they touch their chests a lot, that's what I'm saying. Like putting their hand to their heart, playing with their necklaces or their shirt collars, it could be one of these numbers. I may move my hands a lot when I'm talking, but boy howdy, when I am listening or thinking, no necklace is safe. Oh, oh sometimes it would have been like that. I mean, not the other ones are totally particular safe, but it's just hard to configure it. To those of you watching who think this trait sounds familiar and you could possibly be a heart sphere, here's a little secret for you. Fidget necklaces are an actual thing that you can buy. Yes, definitely you can buy those stuff. I mean, on Etsy, but they also are available in stores. So if you go find it, I mean, you go, you can go pick it up and buy it and purchase it. So that way it could be you, just for real. This sphere is also the only sphere that sits in a chair like a normal person. They don't sit on the edge, their butt is perfectly where it needs to be, taking up the correct amount of space for a humanoid. None of this, none of this, none of this, just butt satisfyingly placed in chair. Oh, so that's what it is right now. Especially if I put my buttocks on each of the chair, just sit manually. I mean, good uh, sit posture with the gesture, especially in college, school, work. You get it. That's what it is. None of that douche look with the biggest, uh, the bad postures or anything like that. None of this nonsense should be out of my way. So don't even contribute to me. <laughs> yeah, now you get the fact of that. Excellent form, darling. Oh yeah, we give a good, perfect score. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. I think Sweet Beast will love my posture of how I done it. Now we get to the Will Sphere. I used to think of this one as the Cowboy Sphere until I got corrected the other day. To start off, when a Will Sphere walks, they lead with their hips. They kind of Wait, is that what he's gonna do? Kind of have that cowboy swagger about them. I described this to a friend of mine recently and he said, oh, like supermodels. Did not notice, Rebecca. I was not even noticing. Yeah, that checks out. Now I think of this as the strut sphere. The sphere of strut. Sphere of strut. Strut sphere. I never heard that word before. I have to put my thinking cap on for me. Have to. The stratosphere! Okay, so- Oh, that's something. Oh. Okay, I thought it's stratosphere. Whatever. Will spheres don't really use their hands all that much when talking. They only gesture once or twice, but when they do, you gotta step back because it's always something big. Like they're laughing at something funny and they slap the table, or it's a get out of here hand gesture, or big finger guns. They I mean, you bet, or hit the road, Jack, like DJ Beast. Oh yeah, word up. Hit the road, Jack. It's time to get rolling. And basically, of course, Oh yeah, that's what I'm going to take over for you. You know that. Feeling it's what DJ Beast does. Even if Sniper Beast would notice that. Yeah, I got you, fellas. I'm coming to save you all. That's what I always know about me. But the slang word doesn't really mean to kick things out of the way. So you don't basically just say in front of your managers, your co-workers, or anything like that. I mean, it's just your friends. I mean, you could just say whatever you want, but at work, I mean, you gotta talk professionally. Do it right. They spend all their gesture points in one go. They're like Sans, they start off with their strongest attack. I did not notice. That was from Unfairy Tales. I mean, I couldn't notice about Markiplier. I don't know if this is intentional, but Will Spears will maintain eye contact with you while talking like they're trying to assert dominance. This is another reason why I used to call them the Cowboy Spear, because they stare at you like it's high noon and one of you is about to cash in your warranty. Supermodels do it too. That catwalk stare looks like you murdered their family and now they're going to remove your vital organs through your ears. I mean, I, I, I don't know why, but jeez, uh, I mean, calm down with that. Legend says that when a Will Sphere and an Intellectual Head Sphere have a staring competition, it never ends. Ever. And last but not least, if you have ever known someone in your life that regularly claims an entire couch for themselves, they were probably a Will Sphere. They don't just sit in the seat, they take up the seat. Just think of Julian sitting in Jenna's terrible jean chair. Oh. Heart Sphere, Will Sphere. Heart Sphere, Will Sphere. Oh, uh, all of that. Heart Sphere, Will Sphere, Heart Sphere, Will Sphere. I mean, all with that thing. 
but it seems like sometimes I go with like heart sphere, but sometimes I just move around like it's will sphere. I mean, oh well, I don't know why I couldn't do it because sometimes it hurts more and I have to move around to try to avoid some hurt things. I mean, I could, I just couldn't control myself. I mean, that's a problem for me. The person could be 4 foot 10, 105 pounds, and somehow they can magically take up every inch of a sofa. Hello, my name is Rebecca. I am a couch stealer. No, I will not move my legs so you can sit down. I claim this furniture in the name of Param. You can sit in the lava. I will never sit in the lava. I mean, I guess they are making this one up, so I get it. As you can probably tell just by the fact that I have already claimed traits from every single one of these spheres, not everyone perfectly fits into one of these categories and my theater teacher's logic was incredibly flawed. It's like, humans are complex, or something. Obviously, this is all just for the yucks, just some good old-fashioned Tommy rot what <laughs> Yucks, or that's just what? Don't take any of it too seriously. But go ahead and let me know in the comments below if you actually do fit perfectly into one of these spheres, or if you're a big old mishmash like me. Well, I'm just like a mix mash, so I, I couldn't help it with my just the sitting ones, but not for walking things because that's a little bit different. So only the sitting ones, posture with the heart and will sphere, something like that. And subscribe while you're at it. I see all of you watching without subscribing, especially you, Blake. Oh, Blake. Oh, yeah. Let Blake subscribe. He's going to say, yeah, we don't care about you. Better subscribe now, Blake. Yeah, you better hit him now, Blake, or else I'm going to show you how it's done. Thank you so much for tuning in, but now I got to tune out. Bye. A whole bunch of people named Blake might be freaking out right now. I could dopamine rush people's brains just by shouting out things specific to them. This is how I use my power! Shout out to the city of Columbus, Ohio, the state of New Hampshire, all of Norway, everyone 46 years old, and anyone whose birthday is November 8th. You are all awesome, unless you're not. Well, I guess I'm not, because I am not in city of Ohio or New Hampshire. So that basically understands that it has to be correct. Anyway, so I bet that this one was absolutely, like, informal to know about the body language in between from a teacher of the theory with all of the body languages. And a theory with that is a big old wacky 10 out of 10 stars. So, yeah, I basically know that it's a great informal information. Well done with that. But none of you are concerned about me. Nobody does. Nobody. Now, I basically noticing that body languages are kind of like hard to do that with the example of not looking in someone's person's face and definitely by contacting them, but it's very hard to like understand what it is. So basically what I do is I just really have to like make sure that I'm fully ready in full, full preparation. And this needs to be done here quickly at the same time. So what I basically do is, I just basically notice that when I talk to someone, they don't look at me right away. And this feels like, yeah, this is kind of distracting for something. And this is kind of rude for some reasons, especially when people are on their phones or doing some other work and they feel like, yeah, I, sorry, I can't talk now because I have some other business to take care of. Well, it's basically not just a thing what everybody knows for. I understand that they're too busy, just like me. I've always done so many editings on my computer, and I feel like I was tired out. My body could not be still at all, and yeah, I was basically like stressed out. That's what happens most of the time. But in the meantime, however, if you are already stressed out, try to take a break from the computer or anything on TV, you're gaming or anything like that and just take a moment to relax and calm down take some rest here if you can so basically everybody needs to know that I mean they basically want to do it but if you got water that'll be okay with me but if you got coffee I mean it will help you get better at it I mean that'll be excellent then you know anyways if you enjoyed this video be sure to smash the button for a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button so it's the best way to support for my channel. And if you already subscribed, hit the icon bell so you don't miss out if you get any new post videos here on my channel. 
for tons of notifications that you will be getting on your devices. And with that being said is, try to stay cool and definitely be professional as you can. Not weirdo body languages, I mean, oh my gosh. And with girls, I mean, just be right. Don't be like slaying yourself. I mean, uh, don't be a slayer. You get that? Anyway, peace out for a while as the fury of the body language teacher dial. I hope you enjoy this one, and I basically do mention that I'd love to too. Anyways, enjoy yourself. Just try to stay comfortable as you can. Stay tuned for the next reaction video. I'll be doing that one here any days. Keep an eye on it. Anyways, thanks for joining with us, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.